Hello and welcome to another episode, edition, segment, whatever you want to call it, of the Rocker Dog Podcast. The only podcast that talks to musicians about their canine companions. I am your host, Tim Dill, along with my own canine companion, Charlie, and today we are both very honored and excited to welcome to the show Tegan Quinn of Tegan and Sarah, who enjoyed a very busy 2022 with the release of their album Cry Baby and the premiere of their TV series High School based on the book of the same name. And this is Tegan's Double Working Rocker Dog. My dog is a two, she turned two in June. So she's just two and a half years old. Her name is Georgia and she is a border collie German shepherd mix. Okay. Uh, to which I heard you describe as a hell breed. <laughs> yeah. We have a, a, we have a friend who had a dog from the same two dogs, like the same parent dogs, but a litter before ours. And, um, and she described it as the hell breed. And we were like, Ha, 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 ha. And then we got Georgia and we were like, wow. And we mean it in, in the most affectionate <laughs> way, but you know, it's a, a double working dog. Very, very, um, there's no laziness in her. There's no laying around. She wants to be working at all times. She's very protective and alert and, uh, determined to be near us at all times. And, okay. um, it's, That's not it's a, bad thing. a lot. Okay. No, I don't think so. Well, it's been it's been well documented that it was a struggle um, when she first came into your life. Um, your first six months, you described in a Instagram post as a mix of misery, mystery, and melodrama. <laughs> um, I'm wondering what were the first 24, 48 hours like? Oh, I just rehashed this with my my partner. We've been together. Uh, my partner's name Sophia. We've been together almost eight years, and we talked, you know, constantly about getting a dog, and it was really just during the pandemic when I was finally off tour and at home for an extended period that we decided to do it. My hang up about getting a dog was always that I wouldn't be home enough to really like help out and, and imprint and really, you know, have a connection with the dog. Cause I just, I travel and tour so much with my band. Um, so when we finally uh, found a dog, cause it was really challenging during COVID, you know, they closed the border, all the rescues didn't have dogs. Like, you know, we were, uh, trying to get an adult dog. And then a friend of ours called up and said, Hey, there's this litter. Um, and they have one puppy left. She's a girl and she kind of looks more like a border collie. So nobody like has snapped her up. Everyone wanted more like the German shepherd looking puppies. And we drove about an hour from here to this place in mission BC. It was kind of looked like a junkyard. And this guy drove down in a truck and behind this gate just held up, picked up Georgia by her scruff and just like held her up between the bars and said we could pet her. And we paid the deposit and we were going on holiday the next day. So we said, can we come back in a week? And he said, that's fine. And she was so docile and quiet and she didn't like move or do anything. And we were like, oh, this is so great. She's really calm, <laughs> just like ridiculous. It was probably like the first time she'd ever been handled. Like it became clear as soon as we picked her up that she had just kind of been living in a cage in the back, you know, like she'd never really been handled. She'd never seen cars. She'd never been around people. She was really nervous right from the start. So the first 24 hours, my partner drove out, picked her up. Um, and I met her when they got into the city and we drove over to my sister's because they had a basement suite with a, with a backyard that we could use at their house. And we thought it'd be easier to sort of start the puppy training and the potty training, you know, like to be there. Cause I live in an apartment <laughs> And um, on the drive over, I was already overwhelmed because like Georgia smelled like pee, you know, like she smelled like she'd been living in a cage with a bunch yeah. of other peas and, and she was so much bigger and heavier than I expected, you know, like, <laughs> but uh, I was already so scared and overwhelmed and we brought her, uh, you know, to my sister's place and we let her run around in the backyard and she wouldn't leave my side, you know, she was really, really close to me right away, like laying under my legs, like just and every time we try to bring her into the um, basement suite, like to the place where we were staying, she would run back outside. She didn't, she'd never been inside. So, right. and then right away too, we noticed like my mom came to visit. And when, when my sister got home, that was the only time Georgia really made a peep and she would bark at everybody. And I was like, that was my first sign too, that she'd like never really been around, like never seen people coming and going. And so, um, but she fell asleep while we were making dinner 
And I remember looking at my partner, Sophia, and being like, we nailed this. Like, this is so easy. Like, she's like, chill, she's sleeping. And then that night we decided we were going to crate train her right away. And so she slept in her crate, but we put it up on a chair and my part, we slept with the door open and my partner put her hand in the crate and Georgia just like slept on her arm because she was, she didn't want to be alone in the crate, but we really wanted to instill this sort of like safe den like thing. So yeah, the first 24 hours were like, Very overwhelming, very new, very scary. You know, she peed in the house a couple of times and and I was like, wow, this is really hard. You know, like I, (laughs) there's things they don't tell you. Like, you know, we put her on a leash and she was like, just like, you know, didn't walk. Yeah. Like you just, just all these things you're like, oh, right. I have to train her how to do all these things. I'm gonna have to introduce all of these things to to this dog. So I felt very overwhelmed and very regretful. And, (laughs) and yet like a hundred percent committed. Like I was like, this is our dog. This will be my dog for the rest of her life. You know, right from the get go. Like, yeah. In that first six months, again, you didn't have any times where you're like, did it, did I do the wrong thing? Did we do the wrong thing? Oh, I thought that a thousand times a day. And the answer (laughs) was always, yes, we did the wrong thing. We shouldn't have gotten a dog, but (laughs) I, I like, there was no, like, I, I also really understood that it felt hard but that it would get easier. I believed everybody when they would tell us that, you know, like right. just like having a kid, everyone was like, it gets easier. And I believed that. Um, I, we also immediately hired a trainer, you know, like we were like, we really, we we're going to need help. We're both busy people. And we really wanted to um, have resources right away. So like right. we immediately hired someone to help us. And that really like that within a month, I felt like I had a handle on things, but you know, we live in a very chaotic neighborhood and Georgia just has, like, we trained with her. We hand fed her the first year, you know, like we did everything sort of by the book, but she just, as much as she seemed to trust us and love us and and flourish when we're around, she also like was a very nervous dog. She like really didn't, I, like I said, I live in a chaotic neighborhood and people there were a lot of people on the streets, like who just like would try to pat her and touch her. And she was just always really nervous with that. And I think everybody was like, introduce your dog to a million people, let a million people touch her, get bikes and skateboards and this, and that's our neighborhood. It's just like chaos. And I think that it backfired. It made her really, it made her more nervous because she'd just never seen anything like that. And so, yeah, the first six months it was, I was deeply regretful. We spent hours every day walking her, trying to socialize her, trying to, help her with her anxieties. Like, it's like we, like she got really, really anxious about bikes. So I put my bike in the apartment and we fed her next to my bike and I would ride my bike around and she was just like, got used to it. So we would tackle like one problem. And then the next week it would be like, <laughs> she hated old people. <laughs> like just all of a sudden out of nowhere, if you were like over the age of 50, she was like really nervous. And like, it just, it's endless. And even now, you know, at two and a half years, she still doesn't really like it when, if we say, say hi, she barks. She really doesn't like when people approach us, but the second she just is left alone for like 30 seconds, then she's a total suck and she loves people and loves dogs and wants to be pet, but she's really initially um, nervous. And we still, like, we still are working on things two and a half years later. So that was like really like deeply imprinted on me that this was like a massive responsibility. I became a billboard for like warning people, like anyone in my <laughs> life like, I'm thinking about getting a dog, I'd be like, we need to schedule a chat immediately. You must know how hard it is. And I know it's just partly our dog, but um, yeah, it was really hard. Um, I also read that you did a ton of research and felt you were well prepared. So my question is, where did that go wrong? <laughs> yeah, I could, I probably will write a book about it at some point. I, I'll say this. I think just like people, what I learned, because I never had a dog, so I didn't know this, is that just like people, like a dog is who they are, you know, like it, it's it's very breed specific for sure. Certain things like we studied up on border collies and German shepherds. I, I knew she was going to be really high energy, need a lot of training, need, loves to work, lots of games. Like we nailed all of that. Like Georgia is like incredibly obedient. She is like those like police dogs you see online, like, you know, that everyone's yelling in German at, like, she's really obedient, but you know, all that training. I mean, we certainly do a lot to try to build her confidence. She still is just a nervous dog. Her, her nature is she wants to guard. She wants to protect. She wants to herd. 
she wants to work. And so when she, when those things came up, I realized that that's not, that's not something you get from a trainer who's teaching you how to get your dog to walk on a leash. You know, like I, I think some of it is just who Georgia is and probably also like, you know, because she'd had no real contact with the city, cars, people, she wasn't handled or touched the first couple of months of her life. She just is nervous. Like, and I think I just didn't know some, also some key things like, you know, we're all sort of taught to throw our hand out to let a dog sniff it, which is like, yep. that's something you do to a cat, not a dog. A dog can smell cancer. It doesn't need you to put your hand in its face. Like, <laughs> good point. And, you know, like, and right away, like some, like I had like read a lot about eye contact. Like you really want to get your dog to make meaningful eye contact with you. Like we did a lot of food training around that. Like Georgia can hold extended eye contact. She's really really great at that but like she doesn't like it when people other people stare at her and i just like i didn't know any of that i didn't like really understand how threatened georgia would be like we get into an elevator and she's so cute and everyone stares at her and then she stares at them and then she gets anxious because they won't stop making broke unbroken eye contact with her and then they stick their hand out and then they lean over and it's like (laughs) very scary like it's my sister has a baby, you know, he's seven months. When we go over to the house, I employ a lot of what I learned about dogs with him. I don't get in his face. I don't say, you know, I don't scream at him because if you, if you do that, he cries because it's like very overwhelming to have somebody get in your face, stick your hand out, like get crazy talk, baby talk. So Georgia, Georgia really is me. Like she knows she doesn't like that. She doesn't want you to scream in her face and talk baby talk to her, you know, it like takes her a minute to get used to. to so, I, you know, like there's a lot that I think went wrong because I just didn't even know to, what to protect her from. Like I right. didn't know what to just say to people like, please don't scream and baby talk at my dog's face. Like she's really nervous. Like I also didn't know like very early on when, when people would approach her, she would pee. And I didn't, it took a minute for me to realize, oh, like she's really anxious. Like we should protect her more. We should get in front of her more. We should be her mom. Like we should mm-hmm. stop. Um, and so some of these things have sort of already imprinted and undoing them has, has proven to be difficult, but I also just really believe do- like each dog has its own soul and nature. And I think Georgia's soul and her nature is just to be a little bit <laughs> unhinged. She's a little nervous, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Well, you mentioned that she's like you in a way, is she, how else is she like you? Like I, I, I was looking at some things that you were saying that, you know, you're, you know, a, a free spirit and very independent, you know, yeah. is she also, or, you know, what are the ways do you guys either sync up or don't sync up? Well, it's interesting. Cause my partner, Sophia, she spends obviously a lot of time with Georgia, you know, when I'm touring and traveling and, and Sophia has a very big, like um, jump re- reflex, like startle reflex. Mm-hmm. So I actually see a lot of Georgia's anxiety more, it, of my my partner I, I think Georgia had it anyway but that's where they they bond is they both have like a large startle reflex and you know she my partner she does what we call a military check every night before bed like she goes and looks in every closet and under the bed like she kind of patrols the perimeter of our place like she just that's her nature and so when we got Georgia like the first year Georgia was always sort of in a command you know, we'd be like, okay, heal. And she would walk the perimeter with, with Sophia and check underneath everything. Like, so they kind of like encouraged, like it was like right. <laughs> they encouraged each other's anxieties in a way, you know, the parts of Georgia, I think that I really get are like that. I'm, I'm a little suspect with new people, but then I really open up and feel real, like I'm, a, I'm a total extrovert and I love being social and Georgia has no chill. Like once people are, once she's settled down and people in her house, it's like, she just wants constant pets and attention and she's just moves from person to person sniffing anyone gets up to go to the bathroom she walks with them to the bathroom you know she's just like kind of me she's like kind of wants to sort of be in everyone's face and know everything that's going on at all times um so and she's just like she's a real cuddle bug too you know she since she was a puppy our trainer had said like you know the first year don't let your dog up on your furniture if you want them to have respect for your stuff and and we were like that's gonna be impossible but we made it almost a year But instead of letting her on the bed or on the couch, I would just get in her bed with her. So every night when we'd watch TV, I would climb into her dog bed. And at first she would get out and just slowly over time, 
we kind of built up this, this trust with each other. And now like every night before bed, I like go and crawl into her bed and she like curls up with me. And like, it's, it, but if my partner tries to do it, George will just get up. Cause she's like the alpha in the house, you know? Right. And so like, I think George is like, Oh, that's, that's mom's bed now. But uh, yeah, she's just like, she's can be really, can be really sweet. And, and she's very social. Okay. You know, in that first six months or a year, can you pinpoint a turning point where things did shift for the better, at least for you mentally or behavior wise, <laughs> was there, you know, kind of a week could look back on and say, gosh, did you notice, you know? Yeah. I think to be totally honest, I mean, there were moments certainly in the first year where I started to feel like I got a handle on things, but actually it was at a year that I was on a hike with Georgia and a bunch of guys were standing in the middle of this trail and went to reach for her when we walked by and she reacted like she was did like a very aggressive bark and kind of lunged and and I like basically no joke like I had a full breakdown afterwards because I was just like this is so hard like how is it it feels like it's getting worse not better and we've been just we've been doing so much training and it just it was really hard and my partner and I we actually got went to therapy because my partner had wanted the dog so much and I hadn't and, and so when we, when, but when I finally came around and we'll get a dog and then we got Georgia and it, and it, there were so many issues, I think I felt guilty saying how hard I felt it was. Cause I didn't want Sophia to feel bad. And Sophia felt like she, she can talk about, she was also struggling, but she was like, oh, I wanted this dog so bad. I can't complain. And so I think when that altercation happened with those guys on the hike, it was like, we finally realized like we had to go and talk with, it was, it was overwhelming our life. Like mm -hmm. our, our life, like we talked about her all the time. Like we were so, we, it just, it, it just had taken over everything. And within like 30 seconds, it felt like of going into therapy to talk about Georgia, it became more about like how Sophia and I communicate. Right, and, right. and I really noticed a remarkable change after that in just how we dealt with it. Like we did start talking about Georgia less. And we also started to kind of be like, well, Georgia just has these things, you know, but within a few months we got into um, our original trainer and did a drop off, like literally sent her for like, like three weeks. And he was like, let me, let me help with this. Like, cause this is, you know, it can escalate and she could end up really like hurting someone if, if someone tried to touch her. Um, and when we got her back, she was far from perfect. Like it wasn't, you know, nobody promised perfect, but she was so much better. Like with, with, that sort of thing. And we started to do in-person training, go, you know, go to the mall, go to Starbucks and like try to get people to pet our dog and like worked with her on that. And so I'd say like about 14 months after we got her, that's when it shifted for me. And one of the things that shifted was I was just like, I wouldn't give Georgia up for anything. And so mm -hmm. if this, if this is just a thing we have to be mindful of, if this is just part of Georgia, like she just doesn't like to be pet on leash then I can deal with that. And I can just, when she does react now, I feel less upset about it. Like, you know, um, and I think like that's when everything else started to, to be amplified. Like she's just such so good on Lee. She's runs 5k with me in a perfect heel, like ears down working. Like she's just so sweet and she's so smart. And you know, like every morning now I get up and I go get her at like six in the morning out of the crate and let her sleep in bed with me. Cause I just like love being close to her. And like, she's just so sweet. My sister brought her baby over in Georgia laid at their feet, you know, like she's really protective and like, you know, I'm just starting to like, look at the things she's really good at. She's never, never destroyed a piece of furniture. She's never eaten anything in our house. She, you know, has almost like a hundred percent perfect recall. Like she's, there's so many things about her that are awesome. The right. fact that she <laughs> doesn't like little dogs and does not like it when someone tries to pet her on leash, I could deal with that. And I think when that shifted in my brain, I started to just really focus on the things she's really great about, you know? Right, right. You just mentioned, you know, the little dog and you keep mentioning bikes, cars, other people. How is she around other dogs? Was that an, also an issue? She, she's uh, amazing around other dogs. She's really, she's definitely reactive mean, on the, but on the positive side, like she's really hyped when she sees dogs. She really likes to be around dogs. She, we now hired a, she's a part of a, a wolf uh, or a, the, this company is called Wolfpack here in Vancouver. And the guy who runs it, his name's Ian. 
He's amazing. He has two packs he takes out um, in one in the morning, one in the afternoon and Georgia's in the morning pack. Um, and it's like 15 medium to large size dogs and they're off leash, like the beach and and she's amazing. She's never dog fight. I'm going to find some wood. She's never been in a dog <laughs> fight before. She's really, our original trainer works with a lot of really, 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 active dogs and dogs and muzzles and so they train the new they do a new puppy program and they train them to stay away from dogs with muzzles and to like she takes cues really well if she gets a correction in the park like if dog has a toy and gives a correction to georgia georgia never goes by that dog again so she's got really excellent dog manners the little dog thing it's perplexing to me part of it is like my little dog bias which i think little dogs aren't often not very well trained because right. they're small and you can just pick them up if they bark or so yeah. But yeah, like there's like specific little dogs like in our neighborhood where they just go ape shit when they see Georgia and Georgia, she'll let off a bark from time to time. But I was corrected. I, I definitely try not to let her get away with that. Like, I don't want her to um, be that way. But then it's so interesting in the dog park off leash. She's great with all dogs of all sizes. She plays really well with puppies. Um, you know, when we bring dogs into our house, she's amazing. She doesn't resource guard. She's not not like territorial over toys. I'll say like, like if someone comes to our door, she's l letting us know. We tried to to train that out of her. We were like, oh, we don't want her to bark. Like she can let off like a couple barks, but yeah. she just she needs to let us know. But she's trained now. She she'll bark. She'll run to the door, bark a few times, and then we say crate, and she runs to her crate, and then she, she just does the. I think it's the cutest thing in the world, but she just lays in her crate and goes, oh, woo, 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 or woo, 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 like quiet whoops, and, which is great. That's fine with me. I'm like, yep, yeah, thank you for letting us know. But yeah, so she's good. She's 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 really good with dogs, which is such a blessing. I really, uh, uh, you know, appreciate that she's great with dogs, but she's really excited by dogs. So we still do a lot of like creating distance. And because I we, we don't, we adhere to the like, don't let your dog say hi to dogs on leash thing dog she knows really well we will and if a dog is off leash and approaches georgia and we're not like in the middle of the street i drop the leash because I, I do believe that georgia probably would react differently if i was still holding the leash with a dog mm -hmm. that you know but um yeah we've had great luck we've had great luck there okay now i've seen on instagram you have a tattoo <laughs> of georgia <Yeah. laughs> Let take me through the creative process of that. Like when, at what point of the relationship that we just got done discussing, were you like, I'm going to get a tattoo and not only I'm going to get a tattoo, but this is the style of the tattoo I'm going to get. And this is the place where I'm going to get it. Yeah. So I definitely never thought I'd be the person who would get their animal tattooed on them. Part of it was that reason where I was like, this is hilarious. So I'm going to do it. But um, I got the tattoo this past spring. So right, right about a month before the two year anniversary of getting mm -hmm. Georgia. And yeah, it was sort of to com commemorate how far we've come. She's, you know, made such a, you know, impact in my life, like a permanent, you know, change in my life. And it felt worthy of a permanent mark on my body. I'm, I'm covered in tattoos and my tattoos are always related to like, what I feel are like big monumental things that have happened in my life. Um, mm -hmm. So it felt, Georgia felt absolutely worthy of that. And um, I was in Calgary, Sarah and I, um, you know, we wrote a memoir about um, the nineties and starting our band and we are ma made it into a TV show for Amazon. So we were shooting in Calgary and I, the, the guitar teacher who worked with the twins on the show, Mason, he is a tattoo artist on the side. And so he does this like very specific, you know, kind of old school style of tattooing and uh, does pet portraits oddly. And I was looking at his Instagram and was like, I'm going to let Mason do a pet portrait for me. So I sent him some images and he uh, ended up putting, it's a, it's a really cute photo of her with her tongue kind of hanging out of her mouth, but it's um, framed by the state of Georgia. And she's an, or her name is an homage to my family who lives in Georgia. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, her face uh, framed by the state of Georgia with a, with a Georgia peach and I got it on my thigh. I got it like above my left knee. And yeah, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and I love it. You need to post a, a better, clearer photo of it. I, I've, I will. I've, only, I've only caught it once on one of your one of your <laughs> shots. But and I was, you know, like the peach, I didn't see the peach. I didn't see the, the oh. <laughs> shape of the state. So 
Okay, for, I'll for post my it. sake, or, or send me one so I can post. I'd be, I'd be happy to do so. Okay. If there's one thing you could change about Georgia, what would it be? Well, of course, this is the trap, right? Because once you start changing some someone, you're not really loving them for who they are. And I think maybe that's been part of my journey is just I've accepted certain things about Georgia. Of course, we work at it all the time. I mean, this weekend- right. We went to a very busy part of town where there's a million dogs because I've been away for a few weeks and I said, I want to walk Georgia a ton, past a ton of dogs. You know, I want to make sure she feels safe and secure, like re, you know, connect with her. So, you know, we work on on all of her trouble issues all the time. Um, you know, of course, I'd love to snap my fingers and have Georgia just be super chill on leash and not react. But uh, we just we'll just work on that. That's just like kind of part of the journey. And you know, sometimes like a few times scary people have approached me. I live like, you know, live in a, a difficult neighborhood to some degree. There's a lot of, there's sometimes people that are not awesome. And uh, I think that's where some of her reactivity came from when she was a puppy. She was so cute. She was like a magnet for all people. And one time I was chased by somebody who was like not in a good mental state and was like very erratic. And I was yelling at him to like <laughs> off basically. And Georgia just started barking crazily. And I think some of her reactivity probably stems from some of those early incidents that happened. And mm -hmm. so sometimes when I'm out taking her for a walk at night and someone sketchy approaches and Georgia starts growling and they cross the street, I'm like, you know what? I don't really like having um, a German shepherd <laughs> looking dog <laughs> who's protecting me. So yeah, I, I, I probably wouldn't change anything about her. You know, I'm happy to just be that. That's part of our journey is we're just going to keep working on it together. Okay. Great answer. It's funny because I just, my last guest that I, I spoke with last week, uh, we came to the conclusion that that would be a good question. I didn't even, I didn't even ask her that question. It was kind of in the, you know, after we turned oh, off the mic, cool. I was like, you know, I'm going to save that for my next interview, but it's <laughs> such a great answer because it is, you, you know, and, it's, and I've talked to guests before about, you know, you can't change the wild instinct that makes a dog a dog, you know? Yeah. So it's, you know, and I don't think I knew, and I don't think I knew that, you know, like, I think honestly, as someone who never had a dog, I just thought, well, we'll pay for really good training and we'll do, and we had amazing resources. I'm really lucky in that way. We have lots of disposable income to throw at Georgia. So we did like swimming lessons and two different trainers. And then we hired someone who just did off leash training with us. Like, I just thought, oh, we'll just train her and she'll be perfect. And it's like the, who a dog is and that wild instinct is in them. Like the fact that Georgia naturally herded us as a puppy and even now it's a treat we give her sometimes we'll take her to the park and we'll let her herd us like we'll mm. let her corral us and like the joy you know she's on two wait lists right now to go to sheep farms to learn to herd like i know <laughs> that's in her and i don't want to change that you know <laughs> that'd be awesome i love the story i can't remember where i read it but you said and you, you were mentioning it earlier when you're jogging with her and she's right on heel yeah. that she'll every so often her nose bumps your back yeah. your knee yeah, yeah I, I love that yeah the first time it happened I was like this is cool like even just to see like her because she, she does have the German Shepherd ears like the that it just went back it went back into working mode like when she's walking <laughs> in working mode it's so pleasurable and yeah when she does the tapping it's and and makes the eye contact with me I'm like I love that because I do think that she would be better off on a farm herding sheep all day, but she's not. She's living in Gastown with me in Vancouver. And so uh, you know, I love to give her, I love to pay homage to her natural instincts. <laughs> all right. Well, we wrap up the show with what I call the zoomies. And those are five okay. quick questions. So the first question is, do you kiss Georgia on the lips? Well, lips, the mouth. Oh, yeah. I give her so many kisses. I let her lick my face for sure. It's disgusting. I love it. Okay, good. I love that's that's my answer, but it's it's usually like a 50 50 split with my guests. Yeah. Question two is given your occupation, has she licked anybody famous for lack of a better word? <laughs> um, any fellow musicians or any well known celebrities? No, I don't think so. I mean, she's met a lot of people who I know. So yeah, I mean, I guess like I mean, recently I had uh, actor and comedian Cameron Esposito over. And so she's licked Cameron Esposito's hand. Um, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> good answer. And, Question three. Really, and, and Jess Rona, who's a very like, she's like a famous uh, groomer and comedian and writer has an amazing Instagram account called Jess Rona Grooming, makes these amazing videos. She's very close with Jess. So she knows very famous Jess Rona. Okay, 
Great. And she did. She directed your videos too. One of your, she did. Your... She directed a video of ours with dogs, and she's she grooms famously. She grooms Katy Perry's dogs and like lots of actors. So that's great. When Georgia got groomed by Jess the first time, Jess sent me a photo of Georgia on one side of the couch and uh, Katy Perry's dog Nugget on the other side of the couch. Very <laughs> that's cute. awesome. Yes. That's awesome. I love it. Question three is if she if Georgia had a theme song, what would you what would what theme song would you give her? <laughs> oh man, probably I oh it's overwhelming. Um we make up songs about her all the time, but uh God, I don't know. I'm, I'm pulling a blank. As a musician, I can't even believe that I'm horrified that I can't even think of one. I can't even just pick a random song. I'm like completely and totally baffled. I'm like, and maybe people, listeners should make suggestions of what now listening to what my dog's like, what would be her theme song? Okay. That'll be a good Instagram post to get people uh, engaged. Yeah. Question yeah. four, do you have a dog voice? Oh, of course. Oh my God. Do you want to hear it? I do. Of course you do. <laughs> yes. we. So I have a voice. I talk to Georgian, but we have a voice for Georgia. So Georgia's voice is oh my god where's my mom's why is my mom's not here and if we start talking like that she runs over and stares at us and we're like stop talking about me that's her voice <laughs> i love it love it and finally is there a dog organization charity rescue any anything that uh you'd like to just give a shout out to while you got a, a live mic yeah for sure i we were just in mexico on vacation and um we went for dinner right next door to this place called um, Acre or Acra. Um, and they have a huge dog rescue. They have like a farm and they have like a hotel and restaurant and stuff, but they have a rescue there. Um, and the site's Acre Dogs. Um, it's funny because I got really obsessed with their Instagram. And when we decided we were going to get a dog, we applied for a dog through them because they just rescue dogs um, in Mexico, but they never responded. So, but that's fine. We got Georgia. It's totally fine. Yeah. It all worked out in the end. Yeah. Um, anything to promote? Anything coming up in the spring or the summer, or the fall of 2023? For yeah, we are. Um, we're two big things happening. We're launching a big tour uh, in support of our new album, Cry Baby. So all, all the tour dates are up online on our website, and we're heading all over North America. And then we also have a graphic novel that Sarah and I wrote that comes out at the end of May, and it's a sort of fictionalized retelling of our junior high experience and it's about you know a set of twins but current the, it's the present the day pre, the prequel to high school it's the prequel to high school but it's fictionalized and it's set in the present day so it's a bit different but it's um illustrated by the wildly talented also a twin tilly walden um and so the graphic the graphic novel is aimed at eight to 15 year olds but it's obviously just like all animation it's like aimed at adults too like we put a lot of adult humor in and so yeah that comes out in may all right. Sounds great. Well, I have to tell you, I just recently had back surgery in uh, late last year, and it was high school, the series and the book that helped me kill a lot of time because I was oh I was on my back. So it was a pleasure, you know, seeing your uh, your younger self. And uh, <laughs> that, that's a whole other podcast, but that must have been a, quite a quite an experience to develop and execute it. It's honestly, it's like a pinch me kind of thing. 20 five years ago we, we this june will be 25 years since sarah and i graduated high school and started playing music and the fact that we had to write books and make shows and do dog podcasts it's all like completely and totally just like none of this i could have ever imagined super grateful and i'm so glad it's helping people finding people connecting with people it's it's uh it's super awesome i really hope we get a second season uh, by the time this airs we should know so all right well best of luck i hope to i hope to see that come to fruition and thank you so thank much for you. giving me your time. It was a pleasure talking to you and, and hearing about Georgia. And it's uh, it, it was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's really nothing I like more than talking about Georgia. So this is really, it's really all, my, it's all me thanking you because it was a pleasure. So. <laughs> thank you. Likewise. All right. A massive thank you to Tegan Quinn for coming on the show and telling us all about her spirited dog, Georgia. The dog organization Tegan chose to shine a spotlight on is Acre Dogs, which was created in 2017 and rescues, rehabilitates, and rehomes street pups to loving forever homes in Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. To donate, volunteer, or adopt, visit acredogs.squarespace.com. Thanks as always for listening. We had a great response from the last few shows, so help us keep the momentum going and spread the word of our existence. 
For more on the show and pictures of our guests and their dogs, follow us on Instagram at Rocker Dog Podcast. We'll be back next week with another great new episode featuring the basis of an all-female indie band who is also quite a visual artist as well, so please join us for that. All right, I just flew back from a couple of wonderful days in New York City, so I need to reconnect with my dog. See you next week. Bye.